Nobody builds 5G like Verizon builds 5G. Because we're the engineers who built the most reliable network in America. And the more you do with 5G, the more building it right matters. The more your network matters. The more Verizon engineers going the extra mile matters. It's us pushing us. It's Verizon versus Verizon. 5G built right from America's most reliable network. Most reliable based on rankings from RootMetric's second half 2020 U.S. report of three mobile networks. Results may vary. Award is not an endorsement. The following is a Hoop Bowl presentation. Hello and welcome to another edition of DFS Today. I am your host, David Menkov. Um, on this Friday night slate, by Friday night slate, I mean the showdown game between Clippers and the Clippers. Sorry, between the Clippers and Mavericks. Um, and I'm joined by none other than Will. How are you tonight, Will? I'm great, David. Glad to be here with you. And like you, we talked before the show, it should have been more than one game tonight. But, you know, we got to deal with what we got. <laughs> so Mavs and Clippers, it should be an exciting one. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's going to be a fun, fun, uh, fun game six here. There's, there's a lot of lot on the line for both teams. Um, it should be an exciting showdown. Uh, we're going to get into a bunch of uh, guys that we're looking at from a Captain perspective, utility perspective. Um, but before we, we jump into everything, I wanted to do a quick shout out to mybookie.ag. Ever since I started the podcast, people have been asking me for betting tips. I always get asked, who do you like, Lakers or Clippers, Rodgers or Mahomes? And I'll tell you what I tell them. Where you bet is just as important as who you're betting on. That's why I tell people to bet with my bookie. My bookie's rep is rock solid, and they got the best odds, contest promotion in the business. They're the only place I trust to handle mandatory bets. The one sports for guaranteed to give me the best lines for the game sixes coming up uh, this weekend. You know me, and you know that I don't give out my stamp approval easily. To earn it, you've got to be the best at what you do. And my book is the best sports book out there, period. It's simple. Sign up, enter promo code HOOPBALL, and get your deposit match halfway up to 1000 bucks. Head over to my bookie if you want to add a little excitement to the sports you love and the games you bet. Bet with the best. Bet with my bookie. All right, well. Let, let's dive into to our showdowns to our showdown between the Clippers and Mavericks. Uh, the Clippers are traveling to Dallas to take on the Mavs. Um, the game is slated to start at nine o'clock Eastern. Um, right now, the Mavericks are um, underdogs. The Clippers are a three-point favorite. Uh, the total is two sixteen and a half as we stand. Uh, from an injury perspective, Luka Doncic. Might have tweaked a little little something there. He's probable, though. Um, should not be much of an issue. Uh, Maxi Kleber um, is also listed as probable uh, for the Mavericks. And on the Clippers' side, Serge Ibaka is expected to play. Um, and he hasn't uh, really appeared uh, since a Game 2 showdown. So this is going to apparently be be a big, uh, big difference maker, potentially. So... Uh, that's really it from injury perspective on either team. Um, so let's let's dive in to the LA side. Uh, well, who do you like on the on the Clipper side? Uh, just given how this is a winner go home situation for them, um, are you going to be comfortable targeting either Kawhi Leonard or, or Paul George in that captain slot? In the captain slot, so yeah. That would make it's one and a half times your value. So Kawhi is eleven thousand six hundred, not in the captain slot. He is seventeen thousand four hundred in the captain slot. PG is ten thousand eight hundred, and then sixteen thousand two hundred in the captain slot. So this is a must-win game, obviously, because they are down three games to two. So you would expect one of the two big guys to go off. Um, last game, Paul George had fifty-one DraftKings points, and Kawhi had thirty-eight. So, but, you know, obviously Kawhi can do whatever he needs to to, you know, get him to a win. And that was his first bad game of the series, and yet they still won. Every other game he's played, he's been in the 50s. So I would feel uh, more confident in playing Kawhi just because of his history. Uh, we know he's a champion, uh, and he's going to do any, any, any and everything he can to will the team. And it seems like Paul George, you know, he kind of crumbles in clutch moments like this. 
So, I mean, we'll see what happens, but I would put my trust in Kawhi in that captain spot at 17400 If you can afford to get him in your lineup at that price, uh, how do you feel about it? Would you consider Kawhi or would you just say Luka is the man, so I'm playing Luka? <laughs> Honestly, this is a tough one. I mean, I think I think that Luca has a chance to be ninety percent owned in that captain that spot, despite his price tag. Um, so, if you're going to play the contrarian option, right, and you expect Kawhi to step up and prove that Kawhi Leonard is one of the, the top players in this league, I think that Kawhi would be a great tournament play, um, and you get some savings to boot at seventeen thousand four hundred. I'm with you. I trust him way more than I trust Paul George in this winner go home scenario. Uh, despite Paul George coming off a 51 point performance in fantasy performance, apologies, in the last game mm-hmm. against this very same team, um, I much prefer Kawhi uh, to your point. Just the fact that he's been consistent. He did have an off night shooting perspective, but you know it's it's a ra- it's a rarity with Kawhi Leonard. He's usually spot on from a field goal percentage standpoint, consistently over 45-50% from the field, but he had a rare off night and and it cost him the W against the Mavericks. Um and if he had a good performance, this would be a whole different conversation here, wouldn't it? So, right, uh, right. so I'm definitely um going to have some interest in Kawhi, but I, I much prefer Kawhi um as a utility spot. Uh, if possible, rather than than the captain position. Um, are there any other uh, Clippers that you're looking at? Um, maybe more as utility plays. There is some value to be had on the Clipper side of the ball. Um, who who are your favorite targets there? Sugar Ray Leonard, Roberto Duran, marvelous Marvin Hagler, and Thomas Hearns, legends whose four way rivalry defined one of the greatest eras in boxing history. Relive their decade of dominance in the new Showtime sports documentary, The Kings, a four-part series premiering Sunday, June 6th, only on Showtime. Nobody builds 5G like Verizon builds 5G, because we're the engineers who built the most reliable network in America. And the more you do with 5G, the more building it right matters, the more your network matters, the more Verizon engineers going the extra mile matters. It's us pushing us. It's Verizon versus Verizon. 5G built right from America's most reliable network. Most reliable based on rankings from Rootmetrics second half 2020 U.S. report of three mobile networks. Results may vary. Award is not an endorsement. Right. Um, you have to look at uh, Marcus Morris, believe it or not. Um, you know, he's at 6,600. You know, last game he finally stepped up and played a great game, has 16.7 boards, and that made him have 37 DraftKings points. You know, that's a sneaky play also if you wanted to throw him in your captain lineup. You know, it's not going to be, you know, a guarantee. It's a risk. But, you know, if he can uh, duplicate what he did last game with those 37 DraftKings points, that's something you can have (laughs) and be very useful in that captain slot and you can get more players in your utility spot. So uh, I feel the same way with Dorian Finney-Smith on the other side. At 6,000, his captain spot would be 9,000. And, you know, he played 40 minutes. So anytime you got someone playing 40 minutes, they can be very productive for you. So you can get more of a loaded lineup with your other guys. But um, that's just that's just if you want to be a big risk taker. You know, like we said, we expect everyone to uh, have Luca or Kawhi in their captain spot. But if you wanted to be a contrarian, those are two options. Do you have anyone else as an alternative option for your captain spot? Or are you sticking with Luca and Kawhi? I mean, I'm probably going to stick to Luke and Kawhi, although the right. Morris play is not terrible. Um, it's just so hard to trust him. He's coming off a great Definitely. game. He does get minutes, which is something that you have to look at from a captain perspective. You have to make sure that that captain is going to get every opportunity. Uh, and on the Clippers side, he is probably the third option. Um, we're talking about the Clippers offense. So or third or fourth option, really. So. Morris is definitely going to be a name that you can throw out there. I just don't know if I'm going to have a ton of interest there just because of the, the volatile nature of Morris's game. Um, that's the only concern for me. But yeah, I'm definitely going to be targeting way more of the uh, more of the, the chalkier plays, unfortunately, when it comes to the showdown <laughs> game. Because with such a low total, it's 216 and a half. There's not a ton of wiggle room either when it comes to the pace of play. Um, you're not going to see a lot of that high-scoring offense. You expect, like, from the Nuggets, 
Blazer series, for example. Um, and therefore, it's hard to really trust a guy like that. But um, what about from what about the Clippers from a utility standpoint? Um, there are there any guys that you're really going to be uh, potentially taking taking some shots on, including Serge Ibaka, now that he's going to be a potential full participant um, in this game? Right. Uh, so we spoke about Morris as possibly the third option. It's debatable between him and Reggie Jackson. Reggie Jackson's at 6,200. You know, he's consistently been getting between 26 and 29 DraftKings points. And I would expect the same from him in this next game. If that's not enough for you, it's you could easily skip him. But if you wanted a safe option to get you guaranteed 25 to 30, uh, that's someone you can use. Um, you can look at Rondo, but his DraftKings points kind of can go up and down, you know, because he's not really going to score. He's looking for assists for the most part. So if he has, you know, high assists and, like, last game one point, that's not really going to help you out too much in your lineup. So he's not a safe play, but he should be out there for leadership. Uh, and you can look at Nicholas Batum at 5,000. Uh, last game he played pretty well. You know, his last two games, 23 and 28 drafting points. More of the same uh, with the bench guys for the Clippers. They're just going to be in a safe range from 25 DraftKings points. Uh, and with, uh, you mentioned Ibaka out, you always can look at um, Rika Zubak. Uh, but he has not really had a great series at all. So I don't know if they would just, if you hear something different about the lineup or anything, uh, you can look into him. But right now, you can't even really trust him. And he's had a great season. But uh, would you feel safe putting him in the lineup? Not Zubak. really. Yeah. Honestly, not really. It, it, it's tough. I mean, that price tag is nice. Don't, don't get me it's wrong. Nice. At, at, at four thousand, but with Ibaka back in the mix, uh, and he doesn't get over twenty minutes anymore um, in this type of lineup, just because the Clippers um, and the Mavs are definitely playing a lot more of the. Well, the uh, I, Ibaka is doubtful, though, right? Uh, well, Ibaka is is currently listed as currently. Um, Doubtful. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I, I misread that earlier incorrectly, so apologies to all our listeners. Um, he is doubtful. He is not expected to play. I read it as he is expected to play, so disregard that first five minutes there. Um, but yeah, so you're absolutely right. Zubac is going to be in play, um, but it's so hard to trust him, even at a 4K range. If you do go Kawhi Leonard um, with Paul George potentially or Luka, you're going to have to find some value here and there. So I don't mind the the play there um, on the Clipper side of the ball, um, but I, for for me, I'm definitely going to have a little bit more interest um, in in some of the other guys on the other side of the ball on the Mavs side. But um, definitely the, the, won't I won't fault anyone for for going that way, uh, especially uh, in this type of showdown game. So I'm with you. Well, is there any uh, other Clippers you're looking for in a utility spot? Honestly, that's pretty much it. I don't have a lot of interest in Rajon Rondo. Um, his price tag with 400. I mean, it is pretty, a pretty affordable price tag in the utility slot. I just don't know if I have a ton of faith of him, despite him being playoff Rondo. A I would say home playoff game. Rondo. Hundred percent, hundred percent. And it's so hard to, you know, I'm sitting here saying that, you know, it's hard to trust Rondo, but he's proven time and time again that he comes up big uh, in the playoffs. So I. Again, won't fault anyone, and it is a price savings from last game. He's under 6K now, so definitely something to consider there. Um, but I'm not going to have a ton of interest. I'd rather spend up an extra 8K, $800, apologies, and go after Reggie Jackson, to, to your point. Um, and and that, pretty much, that pretty much solidifies the Clippers for me, unless you had anyone else on the Clippers side. No, unfortunately, that's, that's pretty much all you can go with right now. And, you know, it's... With with it only being one game, it's going to get ugly. You're going to have to have at least one player in there that you don't want in your lineup. So you just have to do, pick between the best of the scraps. 110%. <laughs> I, I could not agree anymore with you on, on that one. Um, so jumping, out, jumping over to the Mavs side of the ball, this is big. This is an opportunity to close out the Los Angeles Clippers at home. Um, is there any way... In any, in any universe, are you going to be avoiding going the Luka Dante train um, at the captain spot? Um, and do you have the stones to, to do that? 
Well, it just depends on how you want to play. Are Do you want to play to guarantee yourself to win a little bit of money or do you want to play to potentially win it all, win the big prize, you know, because everyone's going to have Luca. So, you know, I, I wouldn't mind, like I said, playing Dorian Finney-Smith or Marcus Morris or Kawhi in my captain spot because I like to be a contrarian. That normally doesn't work out that great. <laughs> and I told you earlier, whenever I fade Luca, it, it always bites me. But I just like being contrarian. But I still, you still have to have Luca in your lineup somewhere. But if you wanted to be risky and do something different, I wouldn't mind not playing Luca in the captain spot. Because I mean, that would be nineteen thousand and two hundred dollars. That's a huge chunk of your money. But I know you, you want them in your captain spot, right? One hundred percent. I mean, <laughs> it's honestly, I can sit here and and pretend that I'm gonna not go Luca and, <laughs> and 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 say that Kawhi Leonard and Paul and George are, are decent plays or even on the map side we're gonna go Porzingis potentially. I mean or Hardaway. None of these guys are the equivalent of what Luca is doing right now. I mean he's pretty much w- w- single handedly carrying the Mavericks um to this position. So as much as I agree that it it will be the chalkiest of chalk um, he's just too good to pass up, in my opinion. I will say, you know, in game four, that's when he hurt his neck. He only had 36 drafting points. So he's probable <laughs> with his neck. He's expected to play. But if he has any <laughs> issues with that neck, you know, he could have a low-scoring game. So you got to remember that, too. 100%. I mean, it, listen, <laughs> we, we can sit here and, and play the – we can play the injury potential narrative, which is fine. <laughs> and it's all well and dandy, but – Barring him, him, like having an absolute, um, you know, which I don't wish on by anyone, but an injury that will actually cause him to miss the game. I don't see any way that he's going to let his neck issue affect him. Um, despite that, to your point, that game four performance for those that rostered him in, the, in, in that spot, will solely, I'm sure, were, were felt burned by that. But Luca is Luca is what Luca is, and he's four hundred dollars less. Um, for this game um, than he was in the previous game where he had 77. Um, mm. So, yeah, it's absolutely wild. I mean, you know, again, I'm going to go Luca, uh, but well, I, I'm not going to fault you for not going Luca there. So I, I think we can, we can dive into some of Luca's supporting cast. Um, any interest in... Tim Hardaway Jr., um, anyone else really catch your eye on the map side of the ball? I think you have to find a way to get Tim Hardaway Jr. in your lineup um, because, unfortunately, Christos Porzingis has just not showed up to this series at all for the most part. You know, game two, he was there, but that's about it. Um, that's not the Porzingis we've been used to. And even earlier in the season, he was playing uh, very well, actually. Uh, had some 60-point draft game games. So, He's just been in uh, non-existent, uh, scoring in the 20s. And, I mean, last game he scored 16 drafting points. That's just ridiculous. And he played 30 minutes. So, I mean, it's clearly this matchup with the Clippers is not working for him. Uh, I don't know if he's injured and, like, hiding his injury and playing through something. But uh, that's not the unicorn we're used to. Um, so, I would get Hardaway Jr. in there because he's going to be the next um, guy look at for – scoring, you know, behind Luca, And like I said, uh, Dorian Finney-Smith at 6000 <clears throat> That's a great, great, great price for him, especially since he played uh, this, I mean, all series. His, the lowest minutes he's played is 37 minutes. So, I mean, that's insane. Uh, so, he's going to be out there. Uh, and, and Maxi Kleber is not really playing well, like we said, and Porzingis is not really playing well. So, there's plenty of opportunity for him. Uh, I think you can also look at you know, bargain band prices, the White Powell. He finally had a good game last game, and uh, his price has not been corrected to a point where you can't use him. He's only going to be at 2,800. He had 21 drafting points last game. So uh, if they feel like that worked for them, he should easily get another 20 minutes this game and be able to be productive for you. And I don't know. I don't know if y'all saw, but they switched the lineup and they play in Boban twenty minutes. Oh, oh, oh. absolutely! Yeah. I was going to mention Boban. <laughs> I, I'm a big yeah. Boban supporter, so I I, I was going to call that out. But go on. Yeah. So <laughs> I mean, that's just more Porzingis 
you know, not showing up. So they're finding other options. But Boban had nine points and seven boards in 20 minutes. So, like I said, that's he's at 2,400. So those are two guys you can sneak in your lineup and get some production out of or, you know, pick one of the two that you would prefer. You can look and see who's starting or, or not. Uh, and so Dallas has – better looking options in my opinion than the Clippers. How are you feeling about the Mavericks? Yeah, no, I, I'm with you. And for me, it's not even that they're better looking, they're just priced better. Uh, right, right, to, right. From that standpoint. So um, I think it's going to be hard to choose. It's pretty much a roll of the dice with Dwight Powell versus Boban um, to see who's going to actually step up in, in this scenario. I mean, price-wise, they are very close. So it's it's not too much of a risk. It's four hundred dollar difference in that utility spot. But either way, they're going to be essential. If you're going to play stars and scrubs in a showdown lineup, you need to have one of them there. Because I'm not going to put Jason Rich Josh Richardson. Sorry, uh, mm-hmm. shout out Jason Richardson, uh, former right. Sixer. <laughs> um, but uh, definitely fan of Josh Richardson normally, but he has not been playing well, and he hasn't been getting a lot At of all. minutes in this series. I don't know what's why he's in a doghouse for whatever reason, um, but he's just not getting any minutes. Coming off a six-minute game where he only had two points, I mean, this is unbelievable for a guy that was a pretty decent acquisition at the time uh, when the, the Mavs signed him and, and got him, brought him over, brought him over to the team. So I am definitely um, not going to have a lot of interest there. More of a tournament play, if anything, um, with with Mr. Richardson, uh, and then. I mean, there's other guys you can look at on the Dallas side. Uh, Jalen Brunson, you know, normally if Luka's out or hurting, to your point, if Luka ends up hurt, hurting in this game for whatever reason and you throw in a Jalen Brunson flyer, I mean, you can pretty much take down any any contest you want because he's going to be about 0.1% owned uh, despite the showdown uh, type of game. So uh, that might be some another avenue you can go. Maxi Kleber has not been putting up any kind of numbers too inconsistent despite his pretty safe floor of minutes. I just don't trust him a lot. Um, Dorian Finney-Smith, to your point, at 6K, not a bad play coming up a 29-point fantasy effort. However, he's so reliant on those defensive stats, really, to get fantasy points. And I don't see one block, five steals being repeated in this contest. So I'm probably going to stay away there. Um, unless you need, unless you need a guy like him, Tim Hardaway Jr., you, you definitely touched on a guy that um, when he gets the ball and he's able to score and score efficiently, he can put out fantasy numbers. We saw that in Game Two, uh, where he had 28 real life points. He shot nine of 14 from the field. In the last game, he shot six of 19, and he still put up 35 fantasy points. So, not the worst uh, person to include in lineups. It just if you're playing Luca in that captain spot, there's not a lot of uh, salary available for a guy like Tim Hardaway Jr., uh, which is the only reason why I'm not going to be going there. And then you touched on it. Kristaps Porzingis, um, the unicorn himself, has been playing more like a, um old faded rainbow at this point um, from from that standpoint. There's just not a lot. Like of, a horse. Uh, yeah, he's playing. He's, that's a good one. He's playing like an actual <laughs> horse. <laughs> and, and, not, and, and not a horse that it could win a triple crown, more of like a like a seventh place horse that no one cares about. <laughs> um, and, and it's pretty embarrassing from, from that perspective. So uh, that's a great analogy. Uh, I hope that that's uh, tweeted out and, and quoted at some point. But um, <laughs> I, I think, uh, yeah, we can definitely fade Chris House Porzingis at that 9,000 salary. The salary has not been adjusted based on his performances in this series. So... That's something to consider, too, uh, when you're building those lineups. But that's pretty much it. Um, any Anything else uh, from the Mavs side uh, that you want to touch on? I think we covered it all. But, you know, when we mentioned Zubak at 4,000, that's just a reminder. If you can't squeeze him in your lineup, you have Dwight Powell and Boban, you know, at 2,800 and 2,400. And they'll probably get around the same level of production. So, I mean... It's just going to be an interesting night, and you're just going to have to you're going to have to tinker with your lineups a lot. Like put Luca in there and see who all you can get in there. If you're not happy with your lineup, you know, then put Kawhi in there and go from there. And you might you might end up not being able to get the one of the top two guys in there. 
to have your lineup feel safe for you. So you just kind of play with it. You probably have to make your lineup four or five times before you feel happy about it. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I, I, I'm definitely in, in alignment there. So um, as far as we normally, we do like to do a little, little uh, tiered structure or favorite plays, but uh, given that it's one game, uh, <laughs> I, I, I mean, let's put, let's make it interesting. Uh, you have okay. to pick your, your favorite play in utility slot. Um, not named Luca over <laughs> over nine k. Um, who who's your guy? Over nine k. Well, it only gives us three options. <laughs> <laughs> Literally three options. I know. <laughs> um, you know, obviously we we would want Kawhi because he's the safest. You know, I'm sure you agree with that one, but uh, we just expect him to come through, and uh, hopefully he will. Hundred percent. No, I'm I'm with you. I mean, you know, normally we don't play that you can use you can reuse guys that the other guy said, but it's just since it's to. a one game <laughs> play, you have to go on Kawhi, double down on Kawhi Leonard. I mean, um, I really want to be contrarian and say uh, Porzingis, but I just can't trust it. It's it's so difficult. It's so difficult. All right, who's your favorite play uh, between five thousand and seventy six hundred? All right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna have to go with. Ooh, okay. You know what? I'm gonna go with. I called him out earlier. Dorian Finney Smith at six thousand. Just, I'm just very happy with the minutes he's been getting, and I think he'll be able to put up some points and be productive for you. you wow, feel? that is a hot take, uh, Dorian Finney Smith. I'm gonna go another guy that's contrarian, uh, and that's gonna go Marcus Morris Senior. Um, six six hundred. Only price six hundred k six hundred k more not six hundred k six hundred dollars more apologies than Dorian Finney. Uh, I think he was going to be slightly lower owned um, than Tim Hardaway Jr. So I'm going to go there. So I look so I that one we don't have to duplicate. Final, who is your <laughs> favorite value play on the showdown? Okay, I'm gonna have to go with. I think you're going to go with Boban. So I'm going to say Dwight Powell at 2,800. I like how he was rim running <laughs> last game. He got a nice dunk, you know, ran back on defense. I think he'll be out there, you know, just in the way of people and <laughs> get a couple stats. Who are you feeling for under 4,500 4, or whatever? <laughs> I'm going to have to go Nicolo Melli. I mean, he's a perfect guy at only 1K. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was late and I was like, is he really serious? <laughs> No, no, no. I'm not absent. I haven't lost it completely. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go. You, you mentioned it. Boban Marjanovic is going to be my guy at 2,400. Um, and we can play that Dwight Powell versus Boban game all yeah, night like long. Um, so awesome. All right. W- with that said, uh, I wanted to uh, thank everyone for, for catching DFS today presented by Hoop Ball. Um, uh, thanks, everyone, for 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 catching us uh you can always follow myself on twitter at dmank33 uh and you can catch will i want you shout out uh will your your twitter name as well for our, our lovely listeners that's right follow me at william is bill and definitely follow my man uh david Minkoff. he's a great twitter follow he's a great guy <laughs> <laughs> i appreciate it appreciate it all right everyone good 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 luck and let's take down some showdowns do it. Peace. This has been a Hoop Ball presentation. Sugar Ray Leonard, Roberto Duran. Marvelous Marvin Hagler and Thomas Hearns. Legends, whose four-way rivalry defined one of the greatest eras in boxing history. Relive their decade of dominance in the new Showtime sports documentary, The Kings, a four-part series premiering Sunday, June 6th, only on Showtime. For the ones who get going when the going gets tough, and the ones who know we're tougher together. For the pathfinders breaking new ground, Granger offers supplies and solutions for every industry as well as fast access to experts and 24-7 customer support. Because we know you have people depending on you, so you can always depend on us. Call, clickgranger.com, or just stop by. Granger 
for the ones who get it done.